the point is probabilities of trading, okay? So think about this. Okay, so this line down here is, it goes to plus infinity and on this other side is minus infinity. So this is probabilities. And then this one is the average or the median, okay? So normally if you study, you know, all right, so that's roughly probability distribution curve for almost anything in the world, except the markets. So with the markets, what happens is, can I make this smaller so that I have, yeah, good. All right. So what happens with trading is the trading distribution curve doesn't look like this. So it starts here, goes here, goes up there, comes back down and goes here. So there are a few characteristics here that are important. One is, this is why scalping works. The majority of your trades are gonna be in this range here because you see how um, the probabilities are mostly gathered around the, the mean on, on the average. So there's an area here, which you usually have samples in everything else, population, heights of people, you know, everything, that you don't have any samples in trading. And then these tails in every probability distribution, they get very, very close to zero. So this line is zero line. So if, if I continue this, this still goes down, but never touches it. So it's a limit, it's a limit value. It goes to the limit, but it doesn't cross over, it doesn't touch. That's why the probability range is always between zero to one, but it is never zero and it is never one, okay? Because these lines, they get very close, but they never touch. Now, in case of trading, there is a distance here. This gap is actually big and it doesn't close, like it doesn't go much lower on both sides. And what this tells you is that there's higher probability of low probability events happening. So things that are happening here, at these ends, and these are really rare cases because, because you have the average here and then you have one, two, three, four standard deviations, so these are ST devs going up and down. So one, two, three. And the probabilities are like, okay, if it, go, if it goes past two, everything on this side, if I remember correctly, is about 96%, uh, less than 96% chance. So everything from the other side to here, this range, actually from the opposite side, from there to here, has covered 96% of all of the possible cases. So for something to happen here, it's like three to 4% chance. And if you go higher three, four, five, then it gets to 1% and less. But this is not for trading. In trading, things that seem to be very low probability happen at a higher frequency. And that pushes this red line up. And then things that are normally happening every, in all the other cases in life, this, these areas, they don't happen all that much, okay? So usually, for example, in other things you see trends, but these trends that cover this, these areas don't happen all that much in trading. So because of these fat tails, because of the things that happen here and here, The negative ones are reason for practicing to be prepared to take out, to take care of your account when they go against you. And because of the positive ones, you have to be open to surprises in your favor. All right. So both of those things happen. 
So you get a surprise is a surprise, right? The surprise doesn't, doesn't know if you are on the right side of it or if you're on the wrong side of it, but you can be on either side, which means if you are not seeing a surprise, well, you can expect it and take advantage of it. But if you are taking advantage of it and then you see you are wrong, you have to be equally fast to get out. I hope this makes sense because this is really, really important. The experience of trading, as far as you know, common sense goes, is not common sense at all. So stuff like this chart, they happen. This is really low probability. It shouldn't have happened. But it does happen. This other one, I think it was an FOMC day. I'm not sure. Yeah, that was an, this was an FOMC report. The day prior. But you have to, you just have to be prepared. The first thing that you do is to prepare yourself for these things. That's job number one. Then you think about, okay, how can I take profits when I'm safe? But in the initial question that has to be answered is, what if it goes against me in, in a big way? Then what would you do?